Amen. Happy Sabbath, children of God. Happy Sabbath, children of God. I believe we are happy to be in the presence of God. Because in the presence of God, there is fullness of. Thank you. So we'll begin the service by singing from the hymn now, 560. Let all things now live in, as we rise and sing with a joyful voice. Let all things now live in a song of thanksgiving to God the Creator, triumphantly raised, who fashioned and made us, protected and stayed us, who guided us unto the end of Forward we travel from light into light. Amen. So the second stanza, we're going to sing it in a unique way. The ladies will start with the first line and the men the next line. I think we already do this, so we should know how to do it. The ladies, let's go. He's law, he enforces the stars in the is the sun in his orbit obediently sh the men now the mountains the rivers and fountains the deep of the ocean proclaim and we all sing now we too should be voicing Let us till some do so live in uniting thanksgiving to God in the highest Hosanna and pray. Amen. We pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us to church. We thank you for life. We thank you for how much you provided for us, protected us, and stayed us. We thank you for the year 2023, how far you were with us. And we thank you for ushering us to the first Sabbath of the new year. Father Lord, we count ourselves and we count our loved ones and we are so grateful for how much you have kept us in love, harmony and even kept this church. All glory and honor be ascribed unto your name. As we begin the service, we pray that you help us to worship you in truth and in spirit, that everything we do here today will be in accordance to your will and we would worship you like never before because we remember how much and how far you have led us. As we also listen to the word, may you also help us to uh, not only be hearers, but doers of your word. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. You may have your seats. I don't know if anybody in this church is as happy, as excited as I am to be in the presence of God. If you know you are excited to be in the presence of God, the first Sabbath of the year 2024, I want you to say a loud amen. amen. I hear the, the children seem to be the happiest in the room. And the sound, yes, the sound guys are doing well. So we'll try it again. I want to see the person that the Lord has blessed the most in the church. The person who has come, 
with humility in heart, with joy in heart, to thank God for this year, 2024, that's already going to be a great year. So we say a loud amen. 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 That's, that's how we do it. So you're welcome to Seventh-day Adventist Church if you're just worshiping with us. Do we have newcomers here? Do we have newcomers here? Oh, Elder Samoa, you're welcome. We hope to see you again next Sabbath. <laughs> Any other new worshiper? Oh, okay. So this is also telling us that we need to bring more people to the church. We need every Sabbath, we have to say, is there any newcomer? We see like five hands or six hands. Because they are, they are a friend cell. And you can imagine if just between friend cell, we can get people to come to church. You could also, you know, extend to American and Germany. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I'm happy that we are in numbers today. And for our, our viewers online, we welcome you as well. Now, I know that there are many testimonies, and there are living miracles here in our midst that we are grateful to God for. It's also an evidence that what we do here is not for granted. What we do here, it breeds miracles. It breeds our faith. It also improves our faith when you see that things you pray for are being answered. And you see smiling faces here today. It's because you're alive and still here. So we'll begin to worship with that in our hearts, that as the new year begins, we will be on fire for Jesus. We'll be more active in church. Amen. Amen. This new year, we'll look for a particular thing to do for God in church. Look for any unit you could join if you're not one already. You know, the, even I would use the, the example of Okay, let me not use that so I don't discourage some people. But I just hope that you will say in your heart that I'm going to do something for God this year. There are people that can sing here. I know because I've been in their hostel before, their hall, at their room. I know some of them are looking down. So you can join in the singing this year. In fact, let's, let's all do this. Let's put our hands on our chests. We are making a pledge this year. <laughs> Are you scared already? It's not looking good. <laughs> we are doing this this year. In the year 2024, let's say it after me. In the year 2024, I will be more active in church. I will do my best to promote God everywhere I go. I will tell somebody about Jesus. I will invite somebody to church. Why are people laughing? You don't want to invite people to church. You were invited to church, so you have to invite others to church. Amen. 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 So help us, God. So we'll begin today's service with a lineup of hymns to praise God. As we rise up on our feet, we'll start with SAH 190. SAH 190. We're singing songs about the love of God today. And I want us to personalize it because God has been so good. And it's because he loves us so much. So we'll rise and sing from our hearts. Amen. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is true, yes, Jesus loves, loves me, yes, Jesus, he loves me. Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gate to open wide, he will wash away, let his lead to 
child come. Yes, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. He loves you. Yes, Jesus. The Bible tells me so. Jesus, take this heart of mine. Make it pure and holy. Die on the cross. You die. I will early for the yes. He loves me. Yes, Jesus. He loves you. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me. He loves us so much. We'll sing from SAH 248, also talking about God's love for us. 248. He loves us and oh, how we love him too. Fifty-two. Love at home.
Sing just the chorus without the instruments. Heaven will be beautiful. Amen. So we can all sit. Let's have our seat. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Okay. It's time to pray. I want to tell you an old story. It's a very old story. It is the story of a man called Felix, Felix of Nola. Now, Felix lived at a time when Christians were being killed. They were being persecuted, they were being hunted, and they were being killed. So one day, there were people who wanted to kill Felix, and Felix began to run. He began to run for his life. And as he was running, he was praying. As he was praying, he was running. So as he ran, he, he got to a place where there was no more hiding place for him. And he was still praying. He was running, he was praying. And these guys were really after him. And all he could pray was, Lord, save my life. Lord, save my life. Now, there appeared before Felix the only, the only answer he could see to his prayer. It was a very old cave, a very small old cave. And now, you know, Felix had to make that decision in a split second. But you know, look at this. Imagine you were running in a desert-like desert area. And the only, you were running from, from people who wanted to kill you, and the only place in that area was a cave. Do you think it would be wise to run into that cave? Because simple reasoning would tell you that they will find you in the cave, because that's the only place someone could hide. But you know, at, at that very moment, Felix had no other thing to do but to run into that cave. Now, when, Kelly, when Felix ran into the cave, he began to pray. He began to pray, Lord, save my life. Now I am in the cave. 
and these guys will surely find me in the cave. Lord, save my life. Let me tell you that God answered Felix. Amen. Amen. But let me tell you how God answered Felix. He answered Felix in a very unusual way. So when Felix got into the cave, and when he prayed to God to save his life, God sent spiders. Do you know spiders? How many of you like spiders? I don't think anybody likes spiders. <laughs> but God, God sent spiders. When the spiders came, they began to spin across the entrance of the cave. Very fast. They began to spin. And as they spinned, the spiders covered the entire entrance of the cave. You know, it was like someone had been in the cave for, I mean, it was like the cave was covered for long. So when those guys came to the cave, Felix could hear what they were saying. He could hear, they were saying, there is no other place we can find him but in the cave. He could hear, and he was still praying, God, save my life. But when, when the commander told his guys to go and check in the cave, on a second thought, he said, but it is not possible for someone to be in the cave with all the spiders across the entrance of the cave. So on that day, God saved the life of Felix with spiders. Amen. Our God can save us with anything. You know, when, when Felix came out of the cave, he raised his hands to heaven and he exclaimed, where there is God, a spider's web is a wall. But where there is no God, even a wall is like a spider's web. So this is the call to prayer this morning. As we begin this new year, many things lie ahead of us. But one thing we can be assured of is that God will always be there for us. So with the faith of Felix and with the God of Felix, we can, we can actually go through the year without fear. And I want to call you to join in this song, I Need the Prayers of Those I Love. And then I would invite you to bow and tell the Lord what you want him to do for you in this year. And then I will conclude the prayer. Let's bow as we sing and then we pray together. The first stanza and the, and the chorus will be enough. I need the praise of those I love Why traveling all life's rugged ways That I may true and faithful be And live for Jesus every day I want my friends to pray for me, to bear my tempted soul aboard, and intercede with God for me. I need the praise of those I love. So let's, let's humbly bow, even the kids. I call the kids to also join in the prayer. It's a new year. It's a new year. God has spared our lives, not because we are righteous. No, no, no. Not because we are good. No, no, no. God has spared our lives for us to worship him in this year. God has given us one more year for us to praise him. So I invite you to bow and pray to God from your heart. Pray to God from your heart. There is nothing God cannot do. And I think the most important prayer point would be to ask God to come and dwell in your life, in your heart. It's a time to renew our covenant with God. 
It's a time to decide to follow Jesus all the way. And for those who are sick, our God will heal you. And for those who have come to the end of, of their way, they are so confused, our God will open a door before you. Pray to God. Pray for a friend. Pray for a daughter. Pray for a son. Pray for a spouse. Pray for the school. I pray for the troubled regions of the world. We enjoy peace in freedom, sir. There are many who don't. Pray for, for, for the new, um, for the second half of the school, the school semester. Students are coming back. Some have, have lost touch with their books. <laughs> I pray that God will give the students desire to study again. For those who have financial difficulties, there are students who, who don't really know how to pay their fees. Our God will open a door before you. May the Lord answer us from heaven today. Father in heaven, we thank you today because you are God and there is none like you. We have heard the story of Felix. And we know that where you are, there is always salvation. And this year, 2024, we come to you knowing that you will be our God all through the way. Oh, Father, we want to confess our sins before you. We have sinned against you in many ways as individuals, as a church. We've sinned against you. And we pray that you forgive us our sins. We pray that this year we will walk in the path of righteousness. This year we will serve you with our heart. And this year we will do new things for you. We pray for blessings upon the children in this church. All of them, boys and girls, black and white, we pray that you bless them immensely. As they go to school, oh, Father, may you watch over them. We also pray for the young people. We pray for the students, those who are struggling with their studies, those who are writing their thesis, those who are looking for internship, those who are looking for jobs, and those who don't know what to do after school. Father, because you are the God who knows our future, we pray that you will reveal to them the next step they will have to take. We pray for freedom, sir. We pray for this school, and we ask, oh, Father, that this school will continue to be a light in this dark world. Uh, we pray for the administrators, for the rector, for the chancellor, for the teachers, for the non-teaching staff, that everyone will know that we have been called for a mission in this university. We also pray for our church. We pray for our pastors, our elders, all those who feed us with your word all through the year. We pray that they will be blessed abundantly. And now, Lord, we present those who are sick before you. We want to use our brother, Brother Elijah, as a point of testimony for what you can do. Father, you are the God of Brother Elijah. And because you have spared his life, we know you will perfect all that concerns him. And because you have done this for Brother Elijah, we also believe that all those who are sick in this church and those who hear us from afar, if they believe, they will receive their healing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. We know that very soon Jesus will come. Prepare us, Lord. If there is anyone in this church today who is struggling with one sin or the other, because we have come to you, Father, may you save such a person. And today, bless our worship, bless the preacher, bless even the singing, and at the end of today's worship, we will go home blessed, for we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen.
Happy Sabbath Church. God is good. You know, on the back there, we are like, we are in a bit of darkness. So when we come to the light, give us some minutes for our eyes to open. You know, thank you so much, uh, Brother John, for leading us in prayer. God is good. And all the time, Happy New Year. How do you say Happy New Year in German? Freues? Neues Jahr. Amen. <laughs> so to, to all of you watching us uh, from afar, we want to greet you uh, in the name of God first, uh, but also in the name of the pastor and uh, church uh, leadership. For those who went on vacation, you, you left us, you went on vacation. You are welcome back. You are welcome back. We welcome you back. So those who are worshiping with us for the first time this year, this year, please be on your feet. Let's say amen to you. Amen. 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 Yes. 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 The first Sabbath, yeah? So the first Sabbath for this year. Some of you were sitting. I don't know which Sabbath you, you went to church already. Yeah? So welcome all of you to 2024. And um, as, 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 as a service, as a church in general, uh, we are happy to see you all in good health and uh, in, 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 in peace, in prosperity and everything. We pray that God helps you to fulfill your wishes, the best ones, yeah, for this year, the good wishes. There are some wishes that are dangerous. We leave it in God's hands. Uh, may his will be done for those ones. Amen. Amen. Uh, please, you see this booklet, this small uh, um, handout, yeah? If you don't have one, we have enough by the bench here. Uh, uh, if, you, if you see where you, we usually put the translators, yeah? The translation kit. You see these uh, uh, leaflets here. Info. Yeah, it is church information. Yeah, every uh, uh, preacher for this uh, quarter, you find it there. There are some announcements there that you also find. So it makes it easy for you. This year we are going in a grand style. We're starting in, in, in a good way. So please pick one, hang it in your room, hang it anywhere. We also have the, the text for the year there. Yeah, so... If you want to do your Bible studies, you can also read that. And I think we will hear more about that today in the, in the um, uh, a sermon. Next Wednesday, next coming Wednesday, we are starting 10 days week of prayer, or 10 days prayer session. We are going to join the world church to pray. We are going to join other Christians to, to pray. And this is not... Prayer, there's no denominational thing in prayer, right? So there's no Adventist prayer. There's no other types of prayers. We pray to the same God. So everyone is invited. Invite your friends. Invite your loved ones. It's going to be on Zoom, the easiest way to reach as many as possible. It's not only for international students. It's also for the... Uh, 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 the, the, uh, for German communities as well. So we will have many people joining us. And for some of you, you've been given each day what to talk about. I think our brother Asamoa is doing a very wonderful job. Let's say a big amen to him. Amen. amen. He is the one coordinating and organizing this 10 days week of prayer. Please, if you have that info uh, or the, the, the prayer booklet, you go through and you present it to us. It's going to be from Wednesday, 6 o'clock to 6.30, sharp. We don't have a licensed U U uh, Zoom account that runs for, for uh, unlimited. So we are even limited by the Zoom timing. Yeah? So it means that if you come, you are rest assured you will not stay for one hour. It's going to be within that time. So also for the presenters and the speakers, you have to prepare your presentation within 30 minutes. If not, Zoom will take us out. Yeah? So that is good for us to keep us, uh, to, 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 to keep within the time. 
So thank you all for those who have agreed to be part of this prayer session and those that will come. Believe that every prayer that will be said will be answered. Amen. Amen. I believe so, and I hope we will all be saved through that. This year, as Sister Agape mentioned before, we need a lot of uh, help and support. And I think, Pastor, we have to do something uh, about the sitting here. It looks like people like the old school pews. So they like to sit on the pews, not on the soft sofas here. Uh, so maybe we bring that one forward so people will come forward. Because I see a lot of people at the back there. But here it looks like empty seat, but it's not, it's not supposed to be empty. So we will think about that. Maybe we bring the pews rather forward, and these ones we pack them behind. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, if not, the next week we will try to be in, in, in front. We are going to have potluck this afternoon after our service. And uh, I'm happy that the, our potluck coordinator uh, is a title I give her. She, she doesn't accept, but I still give her. Our potluck coordinator is here, so you, you, you can be rest assured the meals are going to be different. Amen. Amen. So we thank God. We thank God, Sister Barbara. Thank you so much for, for, for helping us in that direction, that ministry. Amen. So everyone is invited. Come, let us continue to worship God through what we eat as well. And after that, we are continuing our special Sabbath afternoon programs where we sing, we share testimonies, we pray, and it's always very lively. Please make time and join us. After eating, we sing and we praise God, and it's always a blessing. If you have not been attending or if you missed one or two, please join us again. Amen. And now... A shout out to all of you up there. We greet you all. Happy New Year as we continue the service. God bless you. Hello, everyone. Hello. How are you? Fine. Okay. I hope you have enjoyed the entire week, and today is the first Sabbath of the year. Are we happy about that? Yeah. You're happy? Yes. Okay. Then today we are going to talk about something I've titled, Where Are the Nine? Let's pray before we start. Thank you, Lord, for being with us throughout the week. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so where are the nine? So um, our key text is taken from Psalm 103, verse 2 and 3. Will someone read for us? Okay. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Amen. Okay. Can we see this picture very clear? What do you think she's suffering from? This is this day. Mm -hmm. This is this sick. Sick. Okay. Sick. She's suffering from chicken pox. 
Have you been infected by chicken pox before? Do you know chicken pox? Do you know chicken pox? Is it painful? Is it painful? Have you seen someone having chicken pox before? I experienced when I was in high school. It is very painful. And when I was infected by that disease, I was told to go home because I was with my colleagues in the boarding house. It is a contagious disease. It can, when I get it and you are around me, you can also get some. So it is very, very contagious. It can spread very easy to other people. Today we are going to talk about someone or some people who are having contagious disease. They were affected by leprosy. Have, you, have we seen them? Have you seen them? They have bandage around their hands and also on their feet and also they have covered some parts of their body because the entire body is affected by a disease called leprosy. In the olden days, when you were affected by leprosy, you were not allowed to stay in the town or in the community. You will have to stay at the outskirts. Do you know outskirts? At the outside the wall. Hmm? You were supposed to stay outside the wall of the community, the outskirts of the community. So these people were staying outside. And one day, Jesus and his disciples were passing by. They were going to Jerusalem. I said they were going to where? They were going where? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. So on their way, they came across the men who were affected by leprosy. All of them, with the exception of one, nine of them were Jews, but only one was a Samaritan. So they called to Jesus, 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 please help us. Jesus, please help us. So Jesus came and he saw them and he had compassion over them. He felt so sorry about their situation. They were not staying among with their families anymore. They were staying at the outskirts of their, their, their community. And they were so much feeling so exhausted, so much tired. There were so much sadness in them because they were no longer part of their family. It was a terrible experience for them. But Jesus had compassion over them and told them to go and see the high priest. In the olden times, when you were affected by leprosy, you were supposed to go and see the high priest. When you were affected, you go and see him. When you are being healed, you are supposed to go and show yourself for him to examine, for him to see that you, are, you have been healed. So these people were asked by Jesus to go and see the high priest, to go and see the high priest. So they started running. They started running with high speed. They were going to see the high priest, and they were happy because Jesus has told them that he's going to heal them, but they need to go and see the high priest. So on their way, as they were going, the one who was a Samaritan, the one who was not a Jew, there were nine people who were Jews, but there was only one who was a Samaritan. He was a foreigner. He was someone who was considered a foreigner. He saw that he was healed, and he was so happy. So he came back to Jesus and knelt at the feet of Jesus and was praising the name of Jesus. He was so happy and he was saying that, thank you, thank you for healing me. And Jesus was so much happy that this Samaritan, this man who was a foreigner, was able to acknowledge was able to remember that he was healed by Jesus. So Jesus asked them a question. And let's read the question. Jesus asked them a question. So when you read Luke chapter 17, verse 17, Jesus asked, 
were there not ten that I healed? Jesus asked the man who was kneeling in front of him. There were ten men that I healed. Where are the rest? You know, as little children, Jesus always do, he does a lot of things in our lives. He has given us good parents who loves us so much. And we have peace of mind as little children. Jesus loves and cares for us. And therefore, we need to be thankful to Jesus. I said we need to be what? Be thankful for Jesus. We need to be thankful for Jesus, correct. And always we need to pray and show appreciation. So in our prayers, whenever we pray as little kids as we are, we need to always thank Jesus. We need to always show appreciation because God is happy when we show appreciation. And therefore, whenever we remember this story, when we wake up in the morning, what should we do in the first, the first thing? We need to pray and thank Jesus for helping us to see the next day. God bless us and let us remember to always thank him for everything that he has done for us. Amen. Amen. Who pray and thank Jesus for us? Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Afri. The next song will be from SDH 457. I love to tell the story. Each time I look at this hymn, I'm like, hmm. when we get to heaven, and I see everything is just going so well. Once anybody mistakenly asks me, how was it on earth? Ha, Angel, thank you for asking. No. Hmm. As students, we had articles to write, eh? Ha, we survived wars. You know, some people will not like us, but for Jesus, who was on our side. In fact, did you know this? Angel, did you know I got married last year? Do you know? Do you know what love is all about? Okay, you should know. <laughs> Angel, it's a great thing to be loved by God, even when you see trials and tribulations. You know, they might not know, so this is our way of telling them. And I'm sure when we get to heaven, you too, you have your own stories to tell. So we'll rise up on our feet as we sing, I love to tell the story of those things they don't know above. <laughs> we'll sing the first two stanzas at once, and then the chorus, and the next two stanzas, and the chorus. 457. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know it is true. It satisfies my longing as nothing else can do. Second stanza. Let's go. 
Stands us now. I love to tell the story, tis pleasant to repeat what seems each time I tell it. More wonderfully sweet. I love to tell the story for some. I love to tell the story for those who know it's best. Seem hungering and testing to hear it like the rest. And when it seems so glory, I sing the new, new song. Twill be the old, old story. Next to sing from 579. Tis love that makes us happy. Tis love that makes us happy. Tis love that smooths the way. It helps us mind. It Children, God. 
Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. It's glad to, glad to be back home. I was away for a few weeks. I missed you all, but it was great to see my family again. <laughs> and I pray that God will give you all of his blessings for the new year. God bless you all. So now it's time for scripture reading. Um, who knows what the longest scripture reading is? Do you know where to find it, the verse? Anybody? Theology students? <laughs> Anybody? Pastor? <laughs> the longest scripture reading is actually taken from Esther 8 verse 9. And it's so long that I'm not going to read it to you today. But you can read it when you get home. Esther 8 9. And who knows what the shortest, everybody must know this, the shortest verse in the Bible. What is that? Ah, Jesus wept. And where is that found? John 11 35. You know that one. <laughs> but we're not going to read that one today either. I think the one I'm going to read is kind of maybe the second smallest verse, okay? And that is found in, hmm, let me remember what the scripture reading is, 1 Corinthians 16, <laughs> verse 14. 1 Corinthians 16, verse 14. Okay, I'll read it. It's very short, so listen up. You may miss it. <laughs> And it says, and do everything with love. That's it. Do everything with love. May you remember that, and may God bless you as you practice that. <laughs> Amen. Okay, I'm standing in for uh, Dietmar. This is actually his uh, thing, you know. But today... But today he's not feeling fine, so we're also praying for Ditma. If you, if you see us from, if you watch from home, we're praying for you, Ditma. So it's my uh, duty to invite the preacher of the hour, Pastor Stefan Borton Schnoor. Please come up, Pastor. I'm going to pray for you, but then uh, I will try to put my legs into Ditma's shoes to. No, you don't need to <laughs> Okay, um, I'll ask you only one question, so don't, don't be afraid. So, you, you were not always a pastor, were you? No. Okay, so what, at what point and uh, what experience uh, made you decide to, to become a pastor? So, I became a pastor. Uh, uh, that wasn't my first choice, and the complete answer would rival Esther thingy verse 9, 8 verse 9, so I'm not going to repeat it here. Uh, but it was a complex and long story, the end result of which you see before you today. Okay, good. So one day we hope you can, you can tell us the story of your, of your journey into, into the ministry. Yes. We, we, we will hope to, to have that sermon one day. <laughs> so let's pray with, uh, with Stefan now. Let's bow. Father, we come to you again at this time. This is the heart of the worship where we hear from you. We present your son and we pray that you, you envelop him. Your spirit will, will overtake him so that his, his mouth will speak just as heaven would want him to speak today. And at the end of today's worship, our heart will be drawn closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Is that the time? <laughs> Good morning and happy new year to you all. Actually, see you caught that one, isn't it? That's actually good afternoon, everybody. Well, today is the 6th of January. For those not too familiar with the church calendar, 
The 6th of January probably conjured up more memories of what happened in the capital of the United States three years ago than with what I'm about to say. And so we will leave that part of American history there in the corner uh, to be dusted off at another time. On the church calendar, and by church I don't mean just our con uh, denomination, I mean the church uh, in, in general, Protestant and Catholic and others, the 6th of January is an important day, for some more so than for others. It's Epiphany. It's Epiphany. This is the church uh, holiday for remembering the visit of the three, uh, of the wise men. Epiphany meaning appearance. This is when Jesus is said to have been uh, appeared to the world, as it were, represented by these visitors from the East. See, at Christmas you had the local, the local shepherds and the local domestic animals there in Bethlehem, but Epiphany, the visit of the wise men, shows now that Jesus is shining beyond the boundaries of Bethlehem and of the country. Jesus is being worshipped as king, which is exemplified by the gifts that these wise men bring. Uh, traditionally, we say there are three of them because there are three gifts, but as I said to the German congregation this morning already, we don't know how many there were. Maybe there were six, and each shared a gift. I don't know. But the point is that Jesus' birth had a certain drawing power, which was illustrated by the star that led these wise men from abroad to Bethlehem. Jesus' drawing power therefore transcends national and also religious boundaries because the wise men that come to visit are not Jews. They are not of the same faith as Jesus and his family. And Jesus' drawing power is still active today because it transcends not only national boundaries, as is evident in this room right now, it also draws across and through church walls. And that is maybe a metaphor for us, for those of you who are watching us beyond these walls here via the internet or on Friedensau TV. But how does the drawing power of Jesus manifest itself today? How would Jesus be epiphanized, if I may make up that word, in 2024? Because after all, we do not have the baby any longer in a manger or the toddler in the room, in the house, when the wise men came to visit. We are in a village, yes, but Jesus is no longer here. So Paul writes in 2 Corinthians, and I'm just going to touch on this very briefly, in chapter 4, verse 6, that God has shown a light in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So God has shown light into hearts, no longer a star in the sky, but now light in the hearts. Jesus himself refers to something similar, although he doesn't use light as illustration, he just calls, uh, talks about love in John 13, verse 35, when he says, by this will everybody know that you are my disciples when you have love one for another. So here we have still a drawing power. And in John 1, sticking with John, uh, in John 1, verse 14, John describes the fact that God became human or the word became flesh as it were and lived among us and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. So now we have even more. We have love, we have grace, we have truth, we have light that shines. All this is the drawing power, the attraction as it were of Jesus. First when he was here on earth beginning with the star and then throughout his life, including the children's story where leopards came to Jesus and he was not afraid to be near, let alone touch the untouchables. But then after Jesus' ascension, the drawing power remained, now residing in the church. 
Jesus says he will leave the Comforter with us, the presence of the Holy Spirit, and through his ministry, we still have this attraction, grace, truth, light, and love in the church. Now, every year, the churches in Germany, the different denominations come together, and they choose a particular motto, a Bible text for that particular year. You may remember last year, it was taken from the Old Testament, God is a God who sees me. Taken from the um, Genesis where uh, Hagar is in the desert and she's there running away um, and she's visited by an angel. And in the end of the story, she says, this was God who sees me. This year, the text is from the New Testament and we've heard it already. It's taken from 1 Corinthians 16, verse 14. All that you do, let all that you do be done in love. That's the, the Germans call it the Jahreslosung, the motto, the Bible text for the year. And if you went to a church this evening or tomorrow, another denomination, they might also refer to this text because it goes across denominational lines. Now, we want to focus on this particular sentence in 1 Corinthians 16. But first, let me give you a little bit of background of 1 Corinthians. Now, for those theologians of you, let me see where they are. No, ISS, okay, theologians. For those of you who study theology, this might just be a refresher. For us, we're trying to dig back into when was 1 Corinthians last in Sabbath school? Maybe we remember some of the background from then. Anyway, wherever we find ourselves in the spectrum of knowledge when it comes to Pauline letters, in the early 50s, not the 1950s, but the original 50s, Paul is on a mission trip and he finds himself in Greece and he finds he founds a church in Corinth, a very bustling uh, port city um, east and no, west of Athens on a peninsula, a very important geographical location. Later, a few years later, now in the mid-50s, Paul is again on a mission trip. This one is his third one. And he stays for quite an extended period of time in Ephesus, which is what is now Turkey. Corinth is in Greece, and Ephesus is over there in Turkey. Not too far from each other, but also not right neighbor next to each other. Nevertheless, there is an intensive communication developing between Paul in Ephesus and the church in Corinth. Because the church in Corinth, as is evident from the two letters that we have left in the Bible, there were more than two, but the two that we have, even there we see that Paul had a heart for the Corinthians. It was an important city, and the people that had founded the church were close to, to Paul. And so an intensive communication develops between Paul while he's staying in Ephesus there in modern-day Turkey, or, or, or Asia Minor at the time, and in Corinth, and with Corinth. Letters are written from Paul to Corinth and from the Corinthians back to Paul with questions being asked. Paul announces visits. He himself wants to go there, but he also talks about some of his co-workers who will come and visit Corinth, and he gives them recommendation. But it's not just the written stuff. There's also mention in the letters of oral reports, of word-of-mouth stuff. You see, in those days, the rich and privileged were able to write letters. But Paul is also talking about the people of Chloe who tell me this and that. And by that we probably, uh, we, we, we think what is meant is that these are servants or slaves of this particular household who somehow managed to get messages to Paul by word of mouth, not just by the posh uh, written way. And so Paul receives a lot of information of what has been happening in Corinth, especially since he left. Some of it is encouraging, but a lot of it is disturbing. In the end, the Corinthians sent an official delegation. Three, hum uh, three individuals are mentioned in 1 Corinthians who come and visit Paul in Ephesus. In fact, the situation in, in Corinth is, is, is 
summarized in a devotional thought for this yearly motto by a German pastor, Dieter Braun, and he describes this like this. They, that's the church in Corinth, they meet in a private house somewhere on the outskirts of Corinth. They come together there for, from the most diverse neighborhoods in the city. People couldn't be more different. Some are rich, some are poor, some are black, some are white, some are from Africa, others from Asia, some are Europeans. Each come with their own language, their background, culture, and moreover, with their different Christian influences and ethical convictions. Some of them refer to a Christian teacher named Apollos, who explained the faith with philosophical, rational arguments. Others, on the other hand, refer to Paul and his message of the gospel of God's grace. And then there are those who only refer to themselves. Intentionally or unintentionally, all of this disturbs the cohesion of the church. They sometimes simply can't stand each other, so this Pastor Brown in his description, in his devotional thought. One turns up the nose at the other. Instead of love, indifference is rampant. The whole pious operation in Corinth is on the verge of collapsing. Actually, not too far removed from our situation today. So the conclusion of Dieter Brown. And so into this situation, Paul is writing now what we today know as 1 Corinthians, his letter. And in this letter, he addresses a lot of these issues. He addresses the, 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 um, the partitionings, one follow Apollos, one, some follow Paul, which may have developed even into a, an, an almost like a, a, a person's cult. No, you can't tell me anything because you're one of those Apollos people. There are more problems in Corinth than that. That alone would be bad enough. But a man is living together with the wife of his father. That Paul addresses in the letter. There are brothers and sisters who take each other to court, the city court, not dealing with things among themselves in the boundaries of the church, but now they're taking their business now out to the heathen courts. Paul addresses marriage and those who don't get married. He addresses what to do with the meat that is um, offered to idols. There are diverse topics when it comes to the church service. Then he takes a huge chunk in the letter to talk about spiritual gifts, which was a major issue in Corinth. Some thought they were better than others. In fact, some thought they were spiritual while the rest of you were, I don't know, stuck in your secular ways because I have this gift of tongues and y'all don't have anything. That was the attitude of some in Corinth. And in the middle of this discussion about spiritual gifts, Paul nestles a crown jewel, which we now know as 1 Corinthians 13, his marvelous poetry about love. 13 verses of pure beauty. After he deals with the spiritual gifts, he now addresses the resurrection of the dead. It seems that some in Corinth had an issue with how this works with the dead. Maybe they don't wake up at all. And so Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 addresses that. And then he comes to the end of the letter and he's making an appeal for an offering for the church in Jerusalem. And before the, he ends with his uh, customary greetings, he has a few exhortations which is not unusual for Paul. He does that to the Thessalonians. We find that in the letter to the Philippians, and we will find it again in the second letter to the Corinthians. And these exhortations begin with five imperatives. Well, actually, it's four plus one, because the last one is slightly different from the preceding four. In verse 13, we have the first four. They almost have a military characteristic. Keep alert. Stand firm in the faith, be brave or be, in, be courageous, and be strong. If we look at the grammar, we may better translate this actually as, yeah, keep alert, not just be alert, but keep, stay alert, stand firm in the faith, be courageous. The 
King James Version had a very, has a very antiquated um, uh, phrase there. Um, was it quit like a man? It's, um, I had to actually read it up. Yeah, uh, look it up because that's English that I don't speak. Um, and then be strong. And after these four really short, they come like bomb, 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 bomb. And after these four imperatives, do this, do that, and do the other, we now come to number five, which is the motto for this year, which is the text that we read in verse 14. Let everything you do be done in love. Literally translated, actually, it means everything pertaining to you or everything of you be done in love. You see, I make, this, I make this point because it's not just what is done. It is also what is thought. It is also the attitude that is, that is there. Everything. Where are the Greek scholars here? Let me see. Or are you all happy that you've done, you're done with it now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see relief on the face of the pastor. Me too, Elder. That's why we have Bible apps and, and software now. Pantas, everything. Everything that is yours be done in love. So not just these four imperatives that precede the fifth one. No, everything in the letter. All the issues that Corinth has, in fact, if this had been dealt with in love, half, maybe three quarters of the letter wouldn't exist because the problems wouldn't be there. It's interesting, though. I read in a German, um, in a German commentary that Paul says in love, not just with love. And Barbara's translation said, let it all done, be done with love. But the Greek says in love. So it's in the German uh, children's story, I, I try to explain it like this. It's like you are in the forest. We, we are in Fiensau, so this is something that we can all relate to. Right? If you're in the forest, you are in the forest. Everything you do in the forest is in the forest. It's not just that with the forest, like with taking a, a piece of, uh, of, of tree under your arm and now going somewhere and you have the forest with you, uh, what you do. No, when you're in the forest, you're surrounded by it. You don't just have it with you. It, it, it sort of saturates you and your surroundings. And that is what Paul is trying to get across here. Everything pertaining to you, everything of yours should be done in love. Not just with a particular attitude, but in this, bathed in, saturated in, like, like a fish in an aquarium. Let it be done in love. A, another German theologian, Wolfgang Schrage, summarizes it like this. This sentence, what we just talked about, this confirms once again that love as a basic and all-encompassing behavior should govern the entire life of the church in all the areas addressed in the letter. So, now would be a good time to remind ourselves what Paul meant with love, agape. That's the Greek word. It's also a word that makes John very happy, but we're talking about the Greek word here in, in, in 1 Corinthians. What does Paul mean by that? And for that, we have to jump back to chapter 13, to that crown jewel that I was mentioning earlier, nestled in this discussion about spiritual gifts. And in chapter 13, Paul describes what love is. He starts in the first three verses of chapter 13 to describe the supremacy and the essential importance, meaning without which it doesn't work, the essential importance of love. And he ends his little description or his little treatise, his poetry of love, 
in, in verses 8 to 13, where he describes the continuity and the priority of love. And in between those two parts, in verses 4 to 7, we have a description of what love is. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It doesn't insist on its own way. It is not irritable. It keeps no record of wrongs. It doesn't rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things. It endures all things. This is how Paul describes love. And in this kind of atmosphere, surrounded and saturated by this agape love, the Corinthians were supposed to deal with all their issues, with all their topics, and with, with, with all that concerned them. Let everything you do be done in love. But the year motto, the Jahreslosung, was given to us in 2024. So the question now becomes no longer, how was this relevant to the Corinthians? What issues moved the Corinthians? What were they supposed to deal with in love? The question now comes home to us here in Friedensau in 2024. What are our topics, our themes here today? What if Paul wrote a letter to the Friedens Hours? What if he wrote a letter to the church in Germany or to the worldwide SDA church? What topics would he discuss there before he would admonish us to do the same thing that he asked the Corinthians to do, to let it all be done in love? Okay, let's bring it closer to home. What are my private issues? What is that what, what moves me behind closed doors? What moves me as an individual in my public life, as a student, as a, as a, as a worker, as, a, as a, a, a lecturer, as a pastor, as somebody who is maybe retired already? What moves me? What are my issues? What are my topics? But also, what are our topics? Here in Friedensau, we may have different issues than they had in Corinth. We have our topics we need to discuss this year. So how do we deal with that here in Friedensau? At the beginning of year 2024, which is the 125th anniversary of this here place, we celebrate it all throughout this year. You will, by the end of the year, you will not be able to, you probably have 125 coming out of your ears. You've heard it so much. But good, because you only become 120, you know, you only turn 125 once. And then in five years, it's 130. <laughs> yeah, so, and I'm not going, I was, I was thinking, oh, now I should list a number of specifics. But then, earlier this morning, and also in the German service this morning, it went a different way. I'm not listing any specifics. Whatever topics move you, whatever topics move us, whatever are the hot potatoes of our time, personally or corporately, let the Holy Spirit impress you, each one of us, what is relevant and how this text becomes personal to me. But what is not up for negotiation is what we are challenged here to be and do. Let all be done in love. So whatever the topic is that moves me, whatever the question is that I have, whatever the issues and the yeah, even the tensions and, and, and the Corinthians had problems. 
Whatever my problems are, whatever our problems are, let it all be dealt with in love. Not out in some dry desert of selfishness, but in the forest of love, of agape. Not walking around with a stick under my arm or in my hand so I can beat you over the head. Yeah, I love you, but I hate your sin. No, let it all be done in love. Because remember, the people who are watching, the people who we know on different continents, in different languages, different cultures, who we wish they would know God better, they will not recognize that we are his disciples by how well we can defend the Sabbath or by how well we can interpret and explain Revelation 13 or Daniel 9. Jesus said, mm, that's not unimportant, but by this will everybody know that you are my disciples when you have love one for another. When a Palestinian Adventist and an Israeli Adventist can be together as brother and sister, when a Russian and a Ukrainian brother um, Adventist can stay together as a brother and sister, even though in their countries right now is literal hell, that is the love that I'm talking about. When I no longer stop with my consideration, and with my defenses at my own border because it's all about me, but I re realize that the agape love in the Bible is the ability to go beyond myself and to consider somebody else, in the words of Paul in Philippians 2, as even more important than myself, if I can live out what we read in 1 Corinthians 13, if I can live that out in myself, and if we all do that, then we are on our way to what Paul is asking for, let it all be done in love. A lot of heat will dissipate and light will suddenly shine. A lot of problems will just disappear if things are done that way. And so on this 6th of, this, uh, of January 2024, on this day of Epiphany, let, a, let Jesus appear in my life through this love. Let Jesus appear in this congregation through this love. Let Jesus appear in this community of believers where things are done and dealt with in this love, but not just on the 6th of January, the Feast of Epiphany, but every day, all throughout the entire year. Let there be love in all, and let everything be done in love. Amen. Let us pray. Great God, you challenged us. And we realize, first of all, that we do not have that in us. We can't generate that which we just read about in 1 Corinthians 13. That's not us. Because we are bound by our selfish human nature, and that sometimes gets in the way. And so, first of all, we acknowledge that you are love, that you are motivated by something that is strange to us, but that you want to freely give us. You want us to experience that love, you show it to us, and we reflect it. We reflect it to others. And Lord, it's interesting that even people who don't know you experience that. The, how good it is to be selfless. Which shows us that you are at work in so many more people than we think. But now we want to pray for us here. We are a mixed group, Lord. We are, some of us are students, some of us are 
employees at the university, some of us are family members, some of us are visitors, some who are watching maybe are retirees. We, we represent so many different groups from Germany, from Europe, from countries in Africa and beyond. We are such a diverse group, and yet we are challenged all equally by this text for this year, to let everything be done in love. So fill us with your love, and Holy Spirit, show us how we can implement and translate that in our own personal sphere. Because my experience and, and, and my surroundings and my situation may not be the same as the person next to me. And so please, Lord, make it a bespoke experience for us to experience your love and to give it on, to pass it on, so that all will be done in love. Thank you that we will not neglect ourselves in that either because you don't neglect us. We want to stay connected to you, the source of love, who is love. And in doing so, then deal with our issues in that way. We want to be happy together, sad together. We want to argue with each other and agree with each other. We want to exist, coexist, but in your love. And Lord, what I have failed to mention here out loud, you already see in all of our hearts and are more than willing to provide it for us. So at the end of this first Sabbath of 2024, the first service in 2024, we give ourselves to you, great God. We open ourselves up that you may fill us with your love. May it be done, Lord, that you be glorified and that, will, that all people will know that we are your disciples because we have love one for the other. Thank you, Jesus, as we pray in your wonderful name. Amen. Amen. May we arise as we sing the closing hymn, more about Jesus. Sometimes it's difficult to love one another, so we want to know how Jesus did it. How does he love us so much? More about Jesus I would know. More.
shall we receive the benediction. Now may the Lord bless you and me and keep us. May the Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the good Lord that saw us through 2023 lift up his countenance upon us in 2024 and give us peace from this day and the days ahead of us and the years ahead of us. And as we depart from each other here into our various homes and later meet again, may we never ever depart from the presence of God. May we never depart from his love. May we never depart from his grace and peace. And when we gather together again, may he always continue to be our God. May he stretch forth his healing hands upon the sick. His clearer understanding upon the confused. His clear dictates to people in and around us. And may the good Lord continue to smile on us. May his name be praised now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. We have this hope. And let us sing as people with hope for 2024. This is our first Sabbath worship. Let's sing loud. We have this hope that there's within our heart hope in the coming of the Lord. We have this faith that was Shall we be seated? Let's take a few seconds to reflect on the message from the speaker before we start 